Hello and welcome to the Outcast and welcome back to the Tales of Arcadia Marathon, kind of. I'm your host, HC, and with me is... Wolf. And we are in the final stop before Troll Hunters Rise of the Titans comes around because we already did the entirety of Troll Hunters and we did Wizards way back. So now we are catching up on the final piece of the puzzle that we didn't cover until now. Three below. And yes, we are talking about both seasons at the same time because we are hardcore like that and not because we are short on time. <laughs> you can tell. We definitely planned this well in advance and we're just we're on point totally yeah it's not because, because we're the professionals recording of like troll that. it's not like the recording of season three of troll hunters completely fucked up or something no we planned this from the start i blame our host you are one of the hosts <laughs> so you are technically putting the blame of yourself even I'm a by co-host there's a difference mm. <laughs> oh well, oh well. You and your technicalities. But anyway, three below. Um so before we actually start talking about three below as a show, because again we're doing both seasons, uh, I just want to get the 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 one thing out of the way. So the villain in the show, Val Morando, he's voiced by an actor called Alona Butbul. And to those who don't know, Alona Budbu is Israeli. So we are from the same country. And two fun things about that. One, apparently he's not voicing the character in the Hebrew dub, which is hilarious to think of, because sometimes they are trying to look out for this kind of stuff. If there's a, an international actor, they're casting him in the dubs. But okay, whatever. And the second thing you might want to know is that he's also from the same city that I that I grew up in. And long before I was even born, his grandmother set my mother up on a really terrible date. Wow. You're connected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was a really funny <laughs> random story to bring up. No, that's interesting. <laughs> we, yeah, so there, so there you go. You want to know why I hate Val Morando, despite the fact that uh, he's the villain of the show? Well, his grandfather, his grandmother, tried to stop my own my own existence in a sense. I know it wasn't intentional, but still, this is very disheartening to hear. And now we're here talking about the show where he's the villain. The well, five degrees of separation here on the Outcast. Yeah. Somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, now that your minds have been blown by that fact, three below. Wolf, talk to me. What do you think? Uh, I mean, yeah. Simply put, right before we get into spoilers, I would say I enjoyed three below. I've I have now watched all of season one again. I have now watched season two officially, and I can say. Yeah. I have some thoughts later about season two and some stuff we've said before. I'm going back to that old, you know, hole that I'm digging out still. But yeah, overall, I enjoy hey, Three Below. Hey, all the Duxie fan girls, get the pitch, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. But yeah, I, I, okay. I enjoy overall. Three Below is very enjoyable and very fun, and I would definitely recommend going and watching it. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, as I would say with all of Tales of Arcadia, while I may have some issues with it here or there, I think overall it is fairly well written and fairly strong, and you're definitely not going to be wasting your time. Like, if I had anything negative to say about Three Below, it would be that it's disappointing when you see a show that does, in my opinion, really well at, you know, developing characters, even side characters. And you see that same show I forget, or I, I don't know if forget's the right word, but you, you see that show, you know, not pay as much attention to a character you think definitely deserves more attention or should have gotten more attention. I don't want to say anything specific yet until we get into, you know, more spoiler yeah. territory, but overall, one... very much enjoyable, but I think it falls flat in its character development and paying attention to certain characters. I will say this, uh, because and, and it is kind of interesting to talk about both seasons at once, because 
I think what season one does great, season two kind of misses. And for the record, I really like the show. I would even, mm-hmm. I, I would even say that for the first season, uh, like I would even, uh, back when season one was a new thing and everything, I even liked it more than Troll Hunters. But that's most of, that, that's actually something I want to bring up that, you know, Troll Hunters is a fantasy show. Three Below is a, is a more sci-fi show. Yeah. So yeah. really, so so really, w- which one you prefer can kind of come down to your preferences regarding that. I am personally a more of a sci-fi guy, so Three Below spoke to me more. Not to not to God forbid say something bad about Troll Hunters, right? I still I stand by every every positive thing I've said about it and Wizards too, but. You know, you know, wizards is also kind of more fantasy based. Oh yeah, than... I mean, absolutely, it's magic. It's you know, King Arthur. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely fantasy. And, yeah, I, and I then... should mention to our viewers real quick: I'm not as much of a sci-fi person. I'm more fantasy based. I enjoy yeah. fantasy more than sci-fi. Mm-hmm. I, so I, well, I really enjoy fantasy. I'm more of a sci-fi person, mm-hmm. and so Three Below connected with me more. Very and fair. I also. And I also think that in terms of the plot, the overall plot, kind of, again, I I like the tropes the Troll Hunters uses, but I also like that Three Below seems to be a bit more focused, at least in the first season. You have, you have less characters to work with, but because you have less characters to work with, you can develop them more and you can connect with them more. And that's something I think season two kind of misses when we get to it. I disagree on its development of certain characters, but we'll see what your opinion is more yeah, clearly. Yeah, because I keep, it, keep in mind, we are <laughs> keeping this spoiler free for now, so maybe mm-hmm. when we get to spoilers, yeah, fair, something fair. will change. But, um, but overall, I really like the show. What I but again talking about the season one, season two thing, what I really liked about season one, again, not much spoilers, but what I liked is that yeah, you can tell it's the same universe as Troll Hunters, but it still serves it still manages to stand on its own. Like if you just saw three below without watching Troll Hunters, you'll get by fine. Mm-hmm. You'll like you'll do just fine, and even if you saw um, Troll Hunters before this. You won't necessarily you won't necessarily feel like oh the oh you know um this uh, this thing or that thing like just let the show be a show no the troll hunters references aren't distracting by any means you know when it starts getting a problem it's in season two where I'm starting to think they are trying to play it half and half and it doesn't really hit either of those for the most part really. I also disagree. <laughs> okay, so I, I think get, yeah, I think yeah. You know, having watched Three Below now and kind of, I, I need to rewatch Wizards again because I'm curious, and I probably will do before the movie comes out. And I'm curious what the movie does and doesn't do, and how much it ties in. I, I think the MCU has really spoiled us for interconnectedness. Because Three Below feels connected, but when you actually start watching it, and I feel like when you start breaking it down, unless there's a lot of extremely subtle stuff that I have just, you know, completely missed with the blinders on, I feel that Three Below isn't all that connected, and I think that's kind of a problem, personally. That that is that is actually something I do want to bring up when we meant because we mentioned both troll hunters and wizards are uh, fantasy. This is sci-fi, and it's not just standing out in terms of its genre. When you really look at everything, this is the one that's connected to the least to what's going on. Especially when it, I, I, again, we the movie isn't out yet at the time of this recording. It's a few days away, but. When it comes to the plot of the movie, which is supposed to bring everything together, Three Below feels like the most, like the third odd brother to this family. But 
I, I think the the problem with Three Below is is we have in season two this one big reveal of a certain thing. I'm not going to say anything specific just yet, and mm -hmm. that big reveal is very much close to the end of season two, and then it's on to Wizards. And this big reveal in season two of Three Below is just not mentioned at all in Wizards, unless again I missed something. And mm -hmm. unless the movie does something with it, it's like, why? Why did yeah, you need to maybe. give me that information? Because currently it seems like it does nothing. It connects mm -hmm. to nothing. Yeah. And also, on that note, I may have mentioned this in the Wizards review, but before the movie was announced, I thought this whole thing was going to end with Wizards. I thought, I thought Wizards was the big finish. And to those who've seen Wizards, know that only one of the three main characters of Three Below shows up in that, and that's only in the final episode also. And for like, so, and, does, and he does nothing. <laughs> yeah, like they, you know, he shows up, it's like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm consciously yes. obligated to be here, but it's one of those... Yeah, uh, you could have written him out and nothing would have changed. So, and again, one of the, my main problem with Wizards kind of was that it felt more like a troll until season four in a lot of ways, yeah. but it's also... It feels weird yeah, to say but, this, right? Yeah, because again, I think, you know, there's probably, you know, people have brought it up that Wizards apparently suffered through kind of cut contact that net originally they wanted to do 20 episodes of it and Netflix told them, no, you're only getting 10. So they probably planned for a lot more and that's why it has this problem. So, you know, executive meddling again. Fucking but when you, Damn yeah, you. But when, it, but when it comes to a show itself, yeah, you can go too far in either direction. And I think... In some sense, Three Below went a bit too, maybe a bit too far in the, we are, too, we are so standing on our own that what, how are we even related to Troll Hunters? And Wizards went too much in the direction that it's just a continuation of Wizards, of uh, Troll Hunters. <laughs> why, why even have a different title? Fair. I, I was going to say the same thing. Like, it seems weird to make the complaint of Wizards that it's just Troll Hunt, that it's Troll Hunter Season 4 and not its own thing, and then make the opposite complaint of Three Below. But yeah, I think that is, you know, a, a very valid, you know, issue you can level at Three Below. And at Tales of Arcadia, it's either too connected that what's the point, or it's not connected enough. I hope the movie is able to meet meet that really good middle ground of yeah, because giving you what you want to see in the connections, but also still being able to stand on its own to some degree. Yeah, I you know I think it, since you mentioned Marvel, this I, again might I think be, the MCU has spoiled us. Yeah, but when you when you really look at this, I think one of the one of the stuff people have mentioned, at least when it comes to the first phase of the MCU is that a lot of the movies just felt like a setup for the Avengers. Fair. Because, oh, because, oh, you don't know who Iron Man is. Here are two movies about him. Oh, you don't know who Thor is. Here's a movie about him. Oh, you forgot who Captain America is. Here's a movie about him. So that once you get to the Avengers, you know all of these guys. With, and with you that, know... With that said, though, right. those movies were still fairly, in my opinion, fairly good on their own. Yeah, Iron Man was that, a little, not, eh, but for the most I, part. For for the record, I'm not saying any of those movies are bad. No, no, I no. even I get you. I even I like a lot of them even, mm -hmm. but it but it also comes to the point that yeah, while they stand on their own, it's also kind of like if the, if it weren't for the post credit scenes, what really connects any of them? How Fair. is and. Uh, and again, this is, but then, uh, you know, as the, as the MCU went on, it also kind of brought the problem of, yeah, we had to watch the other movies, but if I come to have fun, why do I need to do homework and watch the other stuff? And it's always kind of a really, it's, it's like the line is so blurry 
in this kind of thing. And uh, honestly, I think Marvel has done it the best. Maybe maybe the months of those two, but but you know that only has four movies, so it's not it's not hard to do it with only four movies. But uh, at the same time, yeah, I, I get what you mean. And I, with and with that said, you know. Uh, the DC animated universe, you know, from the nineties, that that kind of had, you know, some, you know, some winks toward each other and some nods and future teases, and still each one of the shows stands really well on its own. Yeah, so... but I, I don't think it fits the criteria of being as interconnected as, say, the MCU got to be. Right? I, I think that's uh, yeah, like that's a clear true. distinction to, to make. Right? Like. Let's be honest, I I would say the MCU was the first to do this on the scale that it did and do it so well, right? Yeah, that that is true. That is true. I agree and, with and while let's be clear, the MCU made its missteps and it was rough going at first. It wasn't great. Right? You know what? You know, it, it I think what you're trying to get, get across there. here is that the MCU was the first thing to do this that had, you know, pun not intended, but had an end game. And uh, troll hunters and troll hunters is going to have an end game. So how does Tribulo connect to that end game when we know that troll hunters and wizards do? Uh -huh. And again, then there's also the thing that wizards did it by basically pretending to be troll hunters in disguise, <laughs> and it uh, it's so complicated. And again, troll hunters for the without record, the troll hunt without the main troll hunter, but yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, not uh, true. Jim has a lot of screen time in Wizards. But he's not the main focus, or he's not supposed yeah. to be the main focus. Uh, yeah, not supposed to be. Let's uh, The supposed part is the very is the important thing. I would argue Claire and Duxie have more screen time than him, but fair. Mm -hmm. Fair. Well, but uh, my, yeah. my, my overall point, though, is, is that it, it's... I suppose it's unfair at this point to some degree, mm -hmm. to judge things by the standard that Marvel eventually got yeah, to. Yeah, of course, but again... But at the same time, when you're... we've been spoiled. All that Disney no, money was not... actually good for and... at least a little bit of yeah, something, I suppose. And, and not only that, you need to. You also need to understand that Three Below premiered after Infinity War came out and uh, and ended a bit, a bit after Endgame came out, so... People had the MCU in their minds at this point. It wasn't mm -hmm. going anywhere. It's not just a thing that happened before and and kind of went away. No, no, no. It was it was you know it was basically at its at the highest of its peak when <laughs> this show came out. So yeah, people were going to draw the Marvel connections, whether they liked it or not. I mean, I, I think you're going to see Marvel connections being made for a long time to come. To be honest, right? Yeah. The MCU is definitely going to be... I think it's definitely left its mark on film history in terms of what's possible, but what you can do if you have unlimited with that money. Said, <laughs> with that said, before we go too far ahead in this direction, we're not talking about the MCU. We said <laughs> we we said that, you know, there is kind of a fine line to walk here between standing <laughs> on your own and, and just, and, you know, connecting to your peers in a There's sense. a point to the MCU yeah. rambling. <laughs> yeah, and and in this case, I think it, but... season I think season one of three below stands well on its own while also being connected. I think season two kind of fumbles with it, but overall, right? Overall, three below is a great show in my opinion, mm -hmm. and I definitely think that if you are if you are going to binge the Tales of Arcadia saga before the movie comes out, this is a good. This is definitely one you don't want to skip. Regardless of what, uh, of how disconnected or entirely connected it is, yeah, it's still a good watch. Yeah, like we might we, we we might sit here and say we feel it's too disconnected, but at the same time, it's still a very enjoyable watch, regardless of mm -hmm. how connected or disconnected it is. You won't be wasting yeah. your time, as I said. Yeah, so go watch it, have fun, and and remember to yell glorious whenever you can. With that said. We're starting to talk spoilers for both seasons, and we might jump around, so keep that in mind. Spoilers in three, two, one. If you're still here, that means you've seen both seasons of Three Below. So, 
let's uh, let's start with this. Uh, what do you want to talk about first? I mean, might as well start with you know general kind of overview of season one, where it's kind of our opener season. We get introduced more to Aja and Krell and find out more about how they are aliens and they're you fleeing know, their home also, world. Yeah, we also get to see where they came from. We see why they arrived at Earth to begin with and how exactly they're staying hidden. We are also getting introduced to their server, Varvat, Varvatox Vex, who is arguably the best character in the show. Arguably. He's, yeah, I, I would agree. Definitely a good character. Wolf doesn't say the old guy is his favorite character. Hasha. Our photos isn't really old. You get the joke. He pretends to be old. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> doesn't Wolf, count. Um, yeah, okay. So you see people, you can't you can't win Wolf's heart if you're just pretending to be old. You need you to, to actually, actually be old, old yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what can you do? Anyway, so, yeah, so what I like about the, the first season of Three Below is, like I said, that, you know, Trill Hunters was a fantasy show and Three Below is a sci fi show. And I think by season one being, you know, parallel to season three of Trill Hunters, it kind of it does help give up that vibe that it's the same world, it's the same, it's the same, you know, it's the same universe, but. It's also different, and we're going to show you what's different about it while managing to keep, you know, references to troll hunters, you know, to spend service level, but not push it in your face. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, one of Three Below Season One's strength is, as you said, see, I, I disagree with you, I should say, on how connected I think Season One is. I think Season One is less connected than Season Two That's what is. I'm no, no, that's what I'm saying. I oh. like the fact that it's less connected. Oh, I misunderstood uh -huh. you then. My bad. Uh, no, what I what I meant by connected is that you know, it, like I said, it takes place around the same time as season three of Twelve Hunters takes place. Like while that was going on, this was also going on, and okay, you okay. see and you see some events lining up. Hell, I think episode nine or something is like a direct it's kind of this one of the same episodes for oh, yeah. it is season it's three the lightning, in a, lightning in a bottle yeah. episode it's just mm -hmm. from uh aja it, and krell's perspective a, than from yeah. the troll hunters perspectives yeah exactly so uh, so you have those and but again i don't think the, the the troll hunters references are like in your face about it they're there but not enough to for you for you to say, oh god, I wish I was just watching Troll Hunters instead. Or that if a new guy starts with this, then they'll be able to they'll be able to jump in fine, even without the Troll Hunters context. Like you'll get that there's something there, but it won't distract you from the whole thing. You could still enjoy it for what it is. Fair, very fair. So yeah, what I was gonna say, right, is is I very much enjoy the. I think season one excels in its character and the characters that it uses and how it develops them for the most part. And because because one thing that Three Blow does is it takes, as we've said before, um, Eli and Steve, right? And they're kind of... Mm -hmm. They're essentially a part of the main group of Three Below. Like, it's still focused on Aja and Krell mm -hmm. and Varvatos, but... Mm -hmm. Steve and Eli become a more major focus. Yeah, because one. in a sense, you can you could even say that Steve is this show's Claire because he's the love interest of one of the main characters. Fair, very fair. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy that because here's two characters that you don't really see a lot of in the main in in the main series, and now you're getting a lot more of them, and you're getting to see these two characters bond with each other as well as Aja and Krell, and you get to see more of this back and forth between all of them. And even other side characters who didn't get a lot of screen time in Troll Hunters, like some of the teachers, like Senor Ul, gets a lot more here than he ever did in Troll Hunters, which is fair. Yeah, Troll true. Hunters had a lot to do. So it's nice that they have those 
already established characters that they can pull from and say, hey, let's do more with them because we have that chance. Right? Agreed. And it's yeah. very enjoyable in that regard. The only problem, mm -hmm. and I would say, right, that season one is a lot more focused on Aja than it is Krell in terms yeah. of her development. I would say a lot of the episodes are devoted to allowing Aja to learn something or mm -hmm. for her to grow in her yeah. into Karel her role gets as a, a bit. Go ahead. Yeah, Karel gets a bit more development in season two. I disagree. But... <laughs> no. In the in concept, on paper, that is what they're trying to get across. Fair enough. But, Fair uh, enough. but like, but yeah, season one is more of Aja's season, and I think, and I think it, I, I think you get this idea even before they leave. Like that, you know, she it's bas she's basically the rebellious princess. Yeah. And now yeah. all of a sudden she's thrown into this role of responsibility because she has to care for her brother while trying to revive their parents who and she she her role basically turns upside down and she needs to learn responsibility that and you um, also see her come into this role as a warrior and start to see herself as a warrior right and learn how to fight better and wants to you know become a better fighter so she can fight and be on the battlefield and kind of just grow into that role right and become more of that and it's mm -hmm. enjoyable. It's very much enjoyable to see that. And they even continue that, you know, that thread for her into season two in terms of what she learns about her mother and everything. It, again, it just comes back to, for me, I wish they had done more with Krell in season two to set up what they, in season one, to set up what they wanted to do in season two because I don't feel like there was enough there for Krell for because, like, uh, I the guess the, development the, because, for him. Yeah, and because I'll tell you what, I think the the idea because again we're we're in the spoiler section, so we can also talk about season two. Oh, fair. So what what happens is that Aja's arc throughout the show is basically going from the rebellious teenager to accepting to, being a queen, yeah, to, accepting being a royal. Yeah, like uh, basically finding her place into, in the world. Uh, yeah, and you know, finding out uh, that she has to be responsible and accepting that responsibility, all sure. all of that jazz. Yep. Basically, how to turn dragon to wink, <laughs> but, and, but and Karel, I think is more is more about that he sort of had had a place back at their home planet, and now we kind of and he has to live with, and now he has to kind of accept the idea that there's more out there than just his home and stepping out of his comfort zone and that and that true and that would end with him deciding you know what i actually like earth more than home maybe i'll just stay on earth for now and i get and you know it's not a bad idea for a character arc but i think like you said it's not being developed enough agreed i, I think the problem is season two has nowhere to actually develop that because things feel more like in, in se season two is very much okay we're on a tight schedule here like that's kind of the idea like we're fight we, you know it's a race against the clock to get back to Acheridian Acar five in time or to and defeat you know general moro uh, Miranda and all of that like there's there definitely feels like there's this rush to it that it's a race against the clock and we have to do all of these things and be real careful about how we do them and and also suddenly you... and suddenly there's this general who is racist against aliens and she's trying to get them and like, she was in what? season one too but very yeah but little it, yeah but it, it's more of a main plot point in season two Fair, fair. That's what I'm but, saying. Um, but again, right, with all of that involved, you know, where do you put, where do you, where do you slow down that for Krell to have these moments of, hey, you know, coming to learn to like Earth and want to stay? And they do have moments, but they feel yeah. so small and so subtle that, mm -hmm. yeah, you can notice them, but you have to be looking hard for them, I feel. And if you blink, you'll miss them. Because they're so I mean, small, and I, I don't feel they're enough. Say, I won't necessarily say that they are small to the point you have to look for them, because I did get some of them. 
But I will say there isn't enough of them. There isn't enough focus on it that when, in the end, he just decides to stay. It's uh, like, wait, why? You know? I mean, you uh, understand it, why, but it feels, it doesn't feel earned why. It doesn't feel like yeah, an because, earned why. Because, let's say, considering Alja has to go back to her planet to accept her role, and she's leaving a boyfriend behind, and... He and you know he while well, he would defend behind what? I you you get what I'm saying that no, she had more reason it, it, to it, stay than it him, even it feels well, like even on top of that it goes against the entire message they were kind of teaching throughout the entirety of season one and season two where you know hey we are a family we're stronger together you know we always have each other together and we can do everything yeah. together and then okay Aja. I'm the one who's been telling you this a lot, you know, over time, and we've been telling this to each other, but not going back with you. We're not going to be together anymore for a while. And it's like... And I guess what? I'm also kind of trying... To, because there's <laughs> a point near the end of the show, like, you know, the, because they were trying to revive their parents to, throughout, the course of the, throughout the course of both seasons. Yep. And by the end of season two, there was a point where... They managed to temporarily bring them back. Oh, but no, the they are back, but yeah. yeah, they're there just to sacrifice themselves, which I... Go ahead. I have words in a minute. Like, so I think you know what you're going to say, but what I thought is that, okay, you know, good that they managed to bring the parents back because, you know, again, the entire show was about that. But, mm -hmm. then, but then, like, for one, they'll sacrifice five minutes later, so it still feels like what were we? Not even five. Were, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, like, shortly after, it's like, hey, Extremely we did it. Short. Only, <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like, hey, we did it only to get like a massive nope right after. That's the point. So when you so you know when you do that when you do something like that, it makes the entire journey feel unearned. And but also what the, I think they were trying to do with it because the parents do kind of say that they see how much Arjun and Karel grew and they kind of want them to not be like them. They want them to be what they make of themselves. Again, I it's been a while, but I remember it being going along, being somewhere along those lines. And mm -hmm. it's like okay. I get it for Aja, who realizes she doesn't have to be the same queen her mother was. But for Karel, again, like, what what motivates him to stay on Earth? That's my question. Very fair. So what I was going to complain about. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I feel like 3 Below wants to have stakes, but then it never commits. Hey, we killed your parents. We killed Aja and Karel's parents. Oh, no, wait, we're actually going to bring them back. Hey, you think Zadra might be dead because she sacrificed herself. Oh, no, wait, she's actually still alive. Hey, you know, season one, we have this big thing where Vervado sacrifices himself. Oh, no, wait, he's still alive. And we rescued him in the next step. And we rescued him in the next season very early on. And Vervados is back. Fair. Mm -hmm. Vervados is a great character. But then... Hey, we're sacrificing... You know, we're sacrificing Vervados again right at the end of season two. Oh, no, wait, he didn't die. He's actually still alive. Nothing's wrong there. And yeah. they do this quite often where character is dead oh wait no they're not and it's not just and there's a few other instances of this happening that i've not listed here right and mm -hmm. you do see characters which, die honestly which honestly you know now that you mention it this is this seems to be like a re reoccurring theme in the entirety of, of the tales of arcadia because it's like oh hey jim turned into a troll no way he's getting out oh wait wizards brought him back to a human okay everything's good yeah, it's it's there's stakes, but they never want to commit to those stakes, and I feel that's a problem. But also, it's which, not like they you don't know what? kill off characters which, <laughs> because they do. Yeah. Like you have, um, you know, Drill. I think that's his name. I can't I remember think so. his name. I'm gonna quickly look it up. Uh, uh, but you know, and while you look it up, something I actually want to ask you. Now that we know it all leads down to a movie. Do you think they're just saving the stakes for the movie for it to feel special? It could be. I I'm sorry, I'm busy looking up this character now. It's okay, but I will I say that know. if you... 
But I will say that if you're keeping the stakes aside just for that your, a future installment could be more impactful, that's not necessarily good storytelling. Like, again, like I will said, Strong. you sacrifice, but you, yeah. So you, you sacrificed, um, what's its face? You sacrificed the uh, Valvatos by the end of season one. Okay. And then he comes back in season two. Okay, fine. I could get that because the show is called Three Below. You can't really kill one of the three because then the title makes no sense. But, but if you're going, uh, yeah, don't do it then, a second but, time, just don't do that. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Don't do the exact same trick again in what you confirmed was the final season because then the show's title still makes sense and you can have that and you can have that impact. You can have that you know you can you can have that risk being or taken. If you, or if you are going to do it, commit to it, right? Like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if the title's three below. Who who cares about the title because it's the end right. of the show. You're not doing it anymore, right? Commit to that if you yeah. want to do it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm But I the just thing is, is they uh, again, sorry. They do kill yeah, characters yeah. though in Three Below. You but it's almost mm -hmm. always villains. And guess what? Every time it's one of the villains that dies, it's because they you know, they did the oh, the villain had a quick change of heart, like the general lady you mentioned who's a big thing in season two. She dies mm -hmm. at the end of it. But she had yeah. a change of heart and tried to work with Aja right at the end and it got her killed. Speaking of changing and... of heart, I just will have to ask, am I the only one who hated the, the Valvatos uh, twist in season one? I didn't. I thought it was really good. It wasn't super surprising, but I thought it, it really worked. I think the only problem I had with it is, you know, we did the whole, hey, liar revealed. We got to all have our beef with one another to see someone to see Varvatos come in and bravely sacrifice himself and, you know, our heroes like him again now, and it's... I'll say that... It's, it's been done before. Like, not only has it been done before, but I didn't feel like this changed anything with that cliche. We just wanted to do that cliche. Because, I mean, like you said, we have the beef afterwards. We have the guy who betrayed them sacrificing himself kind of to do the right thing and show them that he actually did start to care for them and we actually also had the i've seen shows do the entire yeah the bad guy technically sent them to take out the main heroes but then they actually started caring for the main heroes and would eventually turn uh, turn against the villain like I've seen all of this before. And again, it's not killing the show. Like I said, I really liked season one. And I think part of what makes it stand out, uh, part of what makes it work is that I do legit care about these three characters and I want to see them get along but as a family. But it's also, I've seen this cliche so many goddamn times. Why do you have to follow it one for one? But I, I'm fully aware, though, this is a personal problem because this could have been someone's first show doing all of these cliches, and they won't mind it. I mean, it's not even that, right? I don't think... I mean, for me, right, it's one of those things of, I don't mind you doing a cliche that's been done before countless times, so long as you're not doing it so badly that it hurts, right? That you're just failing yeah, okay, miserably at it. I'm okay yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. because uh, yeah sure i've seen it a million times but it exists for a reason it it does work it's just i've seen it a million times it's not something new i i think for me if i had to say anything about it i wish they would have delved more into their anger because because they had this continuation to season two where Mm -hmm. Krell was still angry with Varvatos and wanted to hate him. Why not, you know, yeah. go into that more and use that as a connection back to this, you know, development thread that you've been continuing trying, that you are trying to set up for him in season two by having him, you know, have that connect back to him choosing to stay on Earth, you know, do something with that. Anything, Agreed. please. <laughs> but I agree, I totally agree. It's... It's again, it's not terrible. It's just it happens. It's there. 
would have been nice if it was something more different, but I can't complain with it. Mm -hmm. It's not so, the worst. Something something we brought up before, and I want and I kind of want to talk about it now because we skipped to the ending, so might as well. Um, so we said that season one kind of stands on its own with you, with a few nudges to Troll Hunter. Like it, it's a nice companion piece. I I guess you could say. I mean, There's, the biggest then, nods I would say is Lightning in a Bottle, episode nine, and I believe oh, the other yeah. one is episode six, Deja Vu. Where you get to see, or Daja Vu, where you get to see them, like it's the first episode of the Troll Hunters group and the Three Below group actively working together. And yeah. for what it's worth, a quick, I personally really enjoyed six, episode six a lot because you got to see some of the characters who don't get a lot of interaction until barely into, at close to the end of season two, you know, interact. Like Gorvados and Arg. I would love to see more of because they're just fun. Yeah. But you don't get a lot of that, true. unfortunately. But we'll mm -hmm. get into that. Yeah. But again, so what I want to say though, season one, so, you know, despite some, uh, you know, the, 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 the episode that's basically the same as the Troll Hunters one, only from a different point of view, you have the other, some other ones where they meet up after, afterwards or before and then kind of have a time reset. Okay, but but it's mostly a companion piece. It's mo you know it's mostly just same universe. That's it. But then you get to season two, and the and the thing about season two is suddenly you have to continue Troll Hunters now. You can't just ignore the ending of Troll Hunters, and it doesn't because. But the problem with this is that suddenly Toby becomes a main character. And, you know, fine, Toby is part of the universe, he's, and I suppose he's a fan favorite and everything. Okay, good. Why is he suddenly part of the main cast of Three Below? Why suddenly is he with them on mission? Why suddenly he's so, he's so into everything, into all, everything else that's going on? Isn't he? Doesn't he have something else to do with a tr with the trolls at this point? Despite the fact that Jim is gone training or something. Well, and I mean, I get what they're setting up, right? Because season one or three below is set during season three of Troll Hunters, right? Like that's the timeline, yes. quote unquote. And the idea is mm -hmm. the reason you don't see the Troll Hunters much in that one is because they're off doing other stuff and trying to fight, you know, True. And, and, and again, you know, finding Merlin and rescuing and fighting off Gunmar and the gun gums and all that, blah, blah, blah. And season two and, of three below is set after that fact where Toby's supposed yeah. to be a protector of Arcadia with Arg. Yeah. And again, and, no problem with that. No problem with it continuing this. But my thing is why he suddenly Toby a part of the main cast of the show. You know, if we sound like episode here, episode there, fine, awesome. Not saying he shouldn't be there at all. But suddenly he's just another cast, another character from the main cast. But it's like, it feels like the wrong show, though. And then there's the entire thing where they're trying to set up wizards. Like, the show literally ends with one of the scenes from the first episode, the wizards looking oh, at don't it. Even, no, no, you don't get. No, I have watched season two of Three Below. I'm gonna be angry now. You don't get to say they're setting up Three Below because you know what? You know what? You told me you don't even remember. You didn't even remember if Duxie was in Three Below. That's how little you thought mm -hmm. he. That's how. Okay, okay, that's okay, how okay, background okay. he no. was. No, 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 no. Let me. If, uh, I said it. I said that when Wizards was uh, initially about to come out, and I saw posters. I forgot he was there, but yeah. now, now I, I, I came back to the last few episodes just to, you know, kind of refresh my memory on a few things, and they set, they set up wizards in the final episode. I know, but they don't use it. barely, barely. Oh, they don't the, do, I feel. they don't do it with Duxy though. They do it with the casting. Yeah, the familiar, but yeah. I. Eh. Okay, he so still does you're... nothing in season one or two of Three Below. He does nothing. Do you know how many scenes Duxy gets in season two of Three Below? Two. Not many. Two. Yeah, not many. He gets like one full line of dialogue, and that is it. And it's like, 
pull out hair, pull out hair. I like Dukesy. I do. Wizards did a lot for him. But they did piss all to set him up. And it's like, you have... The entire town is being attacked. To do something with him, please. Have him come in and do something. Something. Yeah, I, yeah, I get you. Like we learn in Wizards you, that you have this entire magical cabal in Arcadia Oaks. Do something with that. Don't set it up in Wizards. Give us to that before so I can be you wondering know what, you know what's what going on there. Better. Give him the guitar. Tease the guitar. Why not? I mean... They kind of did that tease with the guitar in Troll Hunter Season 3 briefly, where he hits a gum gum with a guitar. Yeah. Hit briefly. Briefly. But Why not show it in the full potential here? Yeah, I feel I they it. don't even have to do that. Just, you know, again, have that little wizarding group that you show in Wizards where they're working on, you know, magic and stuff and inside this, you know, uh, quote unquote. Apple product booth stand thing like and you, they open it up to show oh we're doing a whole bunch of magic stuff and it's actually powered by magic right making a joke on that like show that in season two of three below and them like in the background doing stuff and fighting off this you know al helping fight off this alien invasion and then you get that melding of magic and sci-fi to some degree of fantasy and sci-fi and mm -hmm. You don't even have to exactly explain anything. Just show them they're helping and protecting Arcadia, and that's it. And then continue on from there. Because okay. I loved it, right? Because in Season 2, they show, you know, Arg just kind of going around doing stuff out in the open, and people are like, eh, cool, Arg's here. Like, people mm -hmm. who in Season 1 and 2 of Troll Hunters would be absolutely freaking out of their mind you know, would be freaking out and scared out of their mind that you know that this creature is there are just like eh yeah arg's cool we like arg which mm -hmm. fair play arg is great but you know why not do more of that why not show more of that have more of that right uh, yeah i uh, agreed uh, one thing but again kind of going back to what i to the original point i was starting to make before you went on your rant is that um Again, season Dukes two signs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I am so hoping that my <laughs> friend who loves them could come could come on for the next episode. Oh boy, this will be fun. But uh, anyway. Uh what did I even want to say anymore? Okay, I remember. So season two of Thrillo suddenly has to continue from where Troll Hunter season three left off. And the thing is that again. I think they tried biting a bit more than they could chew in a lot of ways because, like you said, either there's small teasing or or it feels like they fit. They it actually feel like they fill it up with a bunch of small teasers to the point it just feels like they didn't really know when to stop teasing you for the future because there's also this part where there, there's a part which cracked me up. I'll just you get to it now that it's in the middle of the season somewhere around the middle of the season suddenly they call blinky and jim who are uh -huh. half doing whatever and that phone call has nothing to do with the episode like it happens and that it ends and there's no connection to what go to what goes on in the rest of the episode. I mean, and it, it, it's it gives them like, hey, you know, Blinky tells them, hey, go see the Sooth Squire, right? And yeah, that's but it. then there's this and there's this point where Jim walks on camera and goes, hey guys, and goes back to fighting. Like, is this this is not a cameo? This is a nostalgia critic joke. I mean, what? I, <laughs> the point is to set up the night that they're fighting. Which... Oh, yeah, so set it up. This is not setting up. Like I said, this is a nostalgia critic joke. I feel... Ugh. I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess I had my complaint, so I can't take away your complaint, right? But mm -hmm. I don't have as much of a problem with your complaint as I do mine. <laughs> what I'm saying I'm is saying, my complaint's more saying, valid, no, 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 HC. I'm You're not, not as valid. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm for the record. Like I said, I'm not saying that this is a point that this is a complaint that which kills the season or makes this a bad show. No, stand uh, on your heel, the, man. Uh, no, I'm it. not saying that. <laughs> uh, shut up. Let me explain. 
I'm not saying this is something that will kill the show. You can even, I would even say it's a nitpick. Fair enough. What I'm saying, though, is that there are so many little nuggets like this sprinkled all over the season. And when the, eventually all those small things gather up. And I think all the small things that kind of irked me in terms of how they're either trying to show it, it's connecting without and forgetting and forgetting the show's main main point. Though eventually, when all those little things gather up, they start to become a problem. At least to me. See, I'm willing to die on my heel because the fan girls don't know what the Duxie's fan fan base, fan girls, fan boys, whoever you are. Mm-hmm don't know what to make of me because my complaint is I wanted to see more of Duxie and that's my problem with him. So they don't know what to make of me because a part of the you know, part of them are going to be like, yeah, it would have been nice to see more of Duxie, but also he's being mean to Duxie. <laughs> so they don't know what to do with me. So I'm, I'm come at me. I'm standing on my heel. Duxie is what ruins three below <laughs> because he's, there's not enough of him. That's the problem. And again, you know what? I might not have much more of a problem with all of those Easter eggs and the teasers, but suddenly by the end of the season, we're supposed to have this, you know, kind of invasion of of the main bad guy coming to Earth and the entire thing with the parents and the general suddenly forgetting, forgetting that she hates Arjan Carell. And it's like, and all of this is somehow supposed to flow together. And... I don't, and I think all the stuff that's supposed to connect it to Wizards and the rest of Tales of Arcadia just kind of don't mesh well all the time. See, you, I don't know how familiar, how familiar are you with the Naruto fandom? Mm-hmm. Um, what, what, what character? Naruto, the show Naruto. Yeah, I know the show. I haven't watched it, but uh, oh, my how, best friend loves it. How, how familiar are you with the fandom? Uh, not too much. Well, have you heard of the term talk no jutsu? It sounds familiar. All right. It's basically a meme in that fandom, and I feel like Aja's basically that of Three Below. Mm-hmm. She is talk, she talk no jutsu a lot because, again, you have Tronos, right? The lizard guy. His entire home is destroyed, and Aja, and you find out that Aja and Krell's parents could have helped but chose not to whatever the reason, and you're not told anything about that. You just know that Aja finds out those answers to some degree, and it's never revealed to you as the audience. And you have this thing of her trying to convince him to help them save the Earth in a a specific episode of Season 2 because a meteor is coming to destroy the Earth. And it's like, eventually she manages to convince him to help, and it's neat, but then at the end of that episode, you know, they're betrayed by the human general again. Uh, Krubitz, Krubitz is her name. And yeah. she captures Tronos again, and, like, you, you have this thing of, you know, Aja telling Tronos, hey, we're not going to abandon you again. They abandon him. And you get this idea, oh, you know, they're going to come back, and then the next episode after that, Tronos is killed by General Miranda to like set up him as the bad guy but the problem is is they never make note of that again like Aja never gets to see that Tronos is dead right that 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 never matters anymore mm-hmm. like and it's interesting right because they get this thing with General Krubitz saving Aja and fighting Miranda briefly and like oh General Krubitz weakened Miranda what she hit him like twice and that was it. But well, okay, fair enough, whatever. You you know, show's got a show, so I'm gonna accept that. And they get this moment of Aja being distraught over Krubritz's death, but you never get anything with Tronos, and it feels like she was way more connected with Tronos, even if more briefly, than she ever was yeah. Krubritz, right? And but... again, I think maybe with I, I you know, we also mentioned that Netflix had some executive meddling with this show, where, like this franchise in general, and it's not an excuse to you know to any of the faults we brought up. It, like it explains it, but it doesn't necessarily mean we can excuse it. Then, then again, I would actually love to see what this season would have been without the meddling. 
it, it would have been interesting. Like, you know, would they have been, if they were allowed to do exactly what they wanted to do, would it have been better? Would it have been worse? Oh, yeah, because again, I, I suspect there was meddling just because I know Weasels did. But I'm not, mm. I, but then again, it's also interesting to think, was this division uninterrupted? And this, and this is why we got to some meddling when it came to Wizards. Yep. Maybe there was meddling all along. I don't know, but I would actually like to know what the, ori what the original idea for this season was, how they were going to pull this off. Because I feel like there are a lot of ideas here that just don't mesh together as well as they hope. Very fair. Again, again, not saying season two is bad by any means. I'm just saying it's distracting. I mean, to the point you brought up originally, right? Going back mm -hmm. to that with yeah. you feeling Toby was out of nowhere and all of a sudden, I agree with the out yeah. of nowhere part, right? Where I Toby's not necessarily say out of nowhere. I'm just I just have a point that suddenly. He is just part of the cold cast of Three Below when he technically belongs to a different show. Which which is fair, but I don't feel like he's as involved as you make him out to be. To I don't closer know. to I the end, that. I can see that, but before the first but before the last, I don't know, I'm gonna say four ish episodes, I don't feel like Toby and more specifically, Arg were there as much as you make out. I feel like there was a lot of time where they just weren't around at all, and I was kind of wondering, why aren't they here at this moment? You know, wouldn't they be great to have around at this moment, and they're just not there? I don't know. I, there was, I think, for to me personally, he just felt like he was there which is too much for the show's own good. Which is fair. Or maybe is or not for the show's own good, but more for... But more for the show being a different thing, which again comes to the entire problem that you know they are setting up a lot of it, but three below still feels like the the other child of the three shows. I and again maybe the movie is going to fix it. I don't have a clue. We'll that's, know soon enough. Once but, more, that's a lot riding on just the movie's shoulders, and I don't know. Yeah. Like, Troll Hunter season three had a lot riding on its shoulders. I feel Three Below didn't have a, a, as much riding on its shoulders, but Wizards did, and I think Wizards came out. And I, and I have to praise them, right? Wizards came out, you know, shining even despite how much it had sitting on its shoulders. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, the show the show is not bad despite the meddling. But the thing I'm saying here, though, is that you know, since the movie is it, because the because the movie is coming to you and the creators came to it as the people know what happened so far. People know these characters, people know their backstories, people know their 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 kicks, the what makes them upset, their quokes, they know everything about them. So I want to see how exactly they're gonna handle it now that because now that we know everything about those characters. What are we going to do with them in an hour and a half? But, I mean, what and there are and there are still some loose ends to be tied, be it from one of the other shows or just in general that the movie is gonna bring up as it goes along. So there is something to look forward to with this to see just how much it can either change our perspective on things because. You can see that, in a sense, with watching these shows again, having Wizards in mind, it did change some of the perspectives yeah, we had fair. initially. Very fair. So, uh, so it's one of those, I would be interested to going back after I see the movie and look over it and no. try and give it a fresh look. Oh, no, I, I agree. Once we go over the movie, it would be very interesting to, like, while we're going over the movie, just go back a bit and look at Troll Hunters, Three Below, and Wizards and see if any opinions are changed. I absolutely agree with that. And, you know, you bring up, um, you know, plot threads and question and unanswered questions still. One of the biggest plot threads I think we get in Three Below is that closer to the end of Season 2, we find out, oh, the Acheridians have been to Earth before. Not once, mm -hmm. but twice. Like, they came a long time ago, and yeah. then Aja and Krell's parents come back to Earth 
a second time hundreds of years, like well before Arcadia Oaks is ever a thing, right? Hundreds of years before Arcadia Oaks is ever founded and all, yeah. like Kanjigar is Troll Hunter at that point, right? That's when mm -hmm. they come back and you get to see Kanjigar and Vendril back alive in this past moment and you have, you know, Audra and Krell's mother and father give this big, the big MacGuffin that is, you know, kind of the end point of season two. I think it's Galen's core, which is supposed to make someone extremely powerful and give them essentially the power of a god who can create or destroy planets and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And they give and that core me... to Kanjigar to protect, and you have Kanjigar talk about this whole thing of, hey, this was foretold in the prophecy. You're never shown this prophecy. You're never given anything about this prophecy as far as I'm and aware, unless a wizard that... goes into it. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll you stop. know, I don't No, I just uh, saying something tells me, because I, I don't think wizards doing anything with it, considering wizards think, also. Unless it was really subtle yeah. in the background and I just missed it, which yeah. is very possible. But something tells me. You know, this is a theory uh, that I think that I thought of right here as we record. I could be completely wrong. Don't uh, don't uh, take this as fact, but I think that thing might be might be what connects three below to to the movie. I mean, it, and, it has to be. But yeah, and we'll only know because. You know, why else would Aja be there? But I mean, at the same time, I think, right, Galen's core was destroyed in the ending of season two or three below. Like, there's no clear defined whether it's still there or gone or not. But yeah, the, 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 but definitely the entire thing of three below was, hey, the prophecy and Akaridians have been here before and they are connected to the mm -hmm. trolls, apparently, in some way, shape or form. But, mm -hmm. but again, that connection is kind of suddenly yeah, doesn't it's... matter. It might as well not exist. If we don't, I mean, I, I guess, right, you do have to judge Three Below based on what it is now, not what the movie might make it or add yeah. to it later. And judging mm -hmm. it based on what it is right now, it's an interesting this... connection, but there's nothing there for it, as I said. Yeah. Which, which you know, I'm not sure if I like the fact that, you know, just knowing that there's a connection there and the le the rest is left for you to figure out, like the rest is just let the fans figure it out, which could be either part of the charm of it, but it's also like, oh, we couldn't really think about I... A, a way to do it so you know which we, we gave up basically you can I look would, at it so that way i would agree with you but then this came out before wizards right you have mm -hmm. wizards now and wizards is supposed to be even more set up so for the movie so if this has a point in the movie now again right i'm coming from the spec perspective of I watched Wizards without context of season two of three below. I didn't bother with season three to season two of three numbers. I, did, yeah. <laughs> I didn't bother with season two of three below. So for me, right, I just I never got around to watching it until we did this, you know, covering it here because it, I'm just not a big sci-fi person personally. It just never was really and... something that super appealed to me. Let me so finish. someone who saw both seasons before Wizards, the only real connection it has to Three Below is like that bit of uh, Toby and uh, Steve, you know, you know, seeing seeing the I forgot the cat's name well, again. God damn it! And Krell, it, but yeah, the the Wizards familiar. I forget his name as well, but he's a he's important yeah, in Wizards. Go watch our review of Wizards. You can hear us talk about him there. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, aside from Corel showing up at the very end. And you know, and you know the that little tease scene uh, showing up to set up the events of uh, Wizards. There isn't really much of a connection between but Wizards and Gen there, Three Below. I feel like there has to be other, and we just missed it because if there isn't, then yeah, this entire thing with Galen's core is just meaningless. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> and again, and again, I think because Ma we mentioned Marvel, they come to this kind of uh, this uh, sort of thing too, where they introduce something in one movie and then kind of expand on it in a movie that 
technically, at first, seems to have like it has no connection. Like, for example, the first thing that comes to mind is that in Ant Man, at the very end, we see the quantum realm when he shrinks down to save his daughter. And this is like a thing we have like a small glimpse on. And then we see more of that place in Doctor Strange. So two movies that technically aren't connected aside from the fact that they're in the same universe, but they explore the same thing. So again, maybe I think they're saving it. Which is fair, but I feel like there should have been something of it in Wizards because oh, don't get oh don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it Excuse shouldn't me. have been. I'm just I'm just saying maybe that's what they're trying to do. Well, again, well, fair. I just I feel like that's simply put. I feel like that's not as good as it could have been because they should have if unless I missed it, which is again very possible. They should yeah. have done something with it in Wizards, and, and because they enough. don't, it is it 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 lets it down somewhat. I don't feel it's going to be yeah. as big because you didn't have this moments of allowing the fans to notice something like, you know, how, oh hey, that's how the Ocaridians are connected, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> I I get I get what you mean. Uh, but I think we basically covered everything. Well, I think I, mean, I covered the, all uh, the points I had. What did you think about Aja and Steve's relationship? You know, we've mentioned it here and there. We should talk about yeah. it. Oh, okay. I would say Three exactly. Below is a little bit more romance focused since you have, you know, Aja with Steve and you have Varvatos with Toby's grandmother or yeah. Nana. Mm hmm. Uh, I will say, you know, just to get Valvatos and Toby's grandmother all the way, honestly, it was one of those, it was it was supposed to be there for a joke. That's all it was. I didn't really, I didn't really see it as anything but. I, it was, it was it played for comedy more than it wasn't, but it, I guess it was okay. It like, eh, mm -hmm. yeah, shrug. It was fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when it comes to Aja and Steve, that's the one I liked more, and Fair. and like for and part of the reason I liked it more is for one, it does it does show that again, your it play, it plays into the internal idea that it's in the same universe, but also but also serves as a complementary piece because we have the original troll hunters where Steve just starts out as the bully. Later turn, you know, later turns into kind of frenemy in a sense, and then and yeah. then we have this show, and then we have this show where he's he might be still a bit bullish when we see him, but he's come in, but he's suddenly becomes the love interest. It's it's um, he uh, he's there to he's uh, he's there to kind of be a part of Aja's story, and also and you know some of the some of the conflicts she's going through, he either helps her through them or he's the cause of that conflict. And, you know, they actually walk through because they could have done and done just that. I'm dating an alien, but he actually doesn't care that she's an alien. He <laughs> respects that. He, 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 you know, he's trying to help her with her problems, even though he has no idea how to approach them in any kind of way, but he's still there. You can tell that they have a legit connection and I had, actually thought it was a, a really interesting relationship well they, they even and... have this this thing of right where when steve first gets introduced to the idea of aliens he's kind of freaking out and saying all these different you know cliched mm -hmm. like this is how humans see aliens they're brain suckers they're going to probe me blah 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 and you have aja and krill there and they're kind of like this is really racist this is really insensitive yeah. and they mm -hmm. and Steve kind of learns from that, and he grows, and you actually start to see him like, "Hey, don't call them aliens; they're Acheridian." And he actually corrects people himself, right? It, mm -hmm. It's it's actually kind of sweet that you see him yeah. learn and, so and again, grow. Yeah. So again, I actually legit thought their relationship was great, and yeah. and it also kind of gave us a bit uh, a bit of a heart, uh, heartfelt moment when. They, when they don't necessarily break up, they just agree that Aja has their own, her own thing to do, and Steve needs to stay on Earth because of his family and friends, and 
but they don't necessarily break it up. They just said until we until we meet again, and they mm -hmm. agree. And basically, you know, it's basically a long distance relationship only taken to the extreme. That's fair. And they do the same with Robatos and Toby's Nana as well. It's again like. But again, I don't really I... care about that one. It's comedy. It's not. Fair. It's not. A, it's not a friendship I like got invested in. I don't feel it's comedy, but I can see where. It, it, but it, again, it is played more for laughs than not. So fair. But we have to ask. Jim and Claire or Aja and Steve. Okay, at the risk... they got to make the shippers mad. <clears throat> yeah, at the risk of getting some of my friends mad, Aja and Steve. <laughs> Fair. And for, the, and for the record, it's not that I don't like Jim and Claire together. On the contrary, they are adorable. And if anything, I think Wizards did wonderfully for their relationship. Yeah, agreed. But at the, but at the same time... Jim and Claire kind of have, I don't want to call it a problem, but they kind of have the Hickstreet itch, which is, it's your traditional couple and nothing more than that when you really, when you get down to it. Fair. I, I feel for me, Jim and Claire didn't have enough moments of just being together. I, I think Wizards mm -hmm. gave them some of that, but I feel like... Before they have that, a few, they have a few, but yeah, it's not a focus. Yeah, Aja and Steve just feel like they have more of that, and it makes you kind of root for them and like and them again, being together again, a lot more. Yeah, and again, you can kind of see how they're making each other better. For, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that Jim and Claire don't make each other better. On the contrary, I think they fit. But at the same time, like you said, I don't really see how this affects their character development necessarily so in that sense i enjoy aja and steve's relationship more very fair i guess uh now if you'll excuse me i'm going to put my flame shield up <laughs> ah i've got the duxie fans and the jim and claire fans after me so i'm all right it'll be fine mm. <laughs> make him survive until next week please i still need him somewhat eh. We'll see. But I, I suppose, final question, favorite and least favorite episode of both season one and season two? Oh, uh, this is a hard one. Gotta do it. This is a hard one. Um, hmm, I need to think this over. I suppose I can go you know first. What? You know what? I will, I think, as cliche as it may be, I would say the season one finale. For favorite episode? Yes. Of season one. Least favorite of season one, then. Least favorite of season one. Um, I, You know, not that it's bad by any means, but I'd probably say... I'd probably say the, you know, different point of view episode, just because, again, it's a repeat of... It's still a repeat of Toronto, so it feels like we need to put it, put it there out of obligation, where we could have just referenced it. That's fair. I think favorite episode of season one for me, hmm, probably going to be yeah, I would say last night on Earth. I think that was very enjoyable for me. Either that one, it'd probably be between that one or the Arcadian job, because the okay. Arcadian job was quite enjoyable as a ref as a big reference thing. And I enjoyed that reference, I'll admit. Least favorite of season one would probably be either Beatlemania or I think Collision Course. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all. Because I think they do enough with the other episodes that I find fairly enjoyable. As for mm -hmm. season two, favorite and least favorite. Well, to me, again, keep in mind, um, my memory is a bit hazy on those. But okay. I think, but I think in one of the episodes where we we where we focused on Aja and Steve, you know, dating and everything, um, so uh, Carell actually 
gets uh, get some sort of a hobby with the other guys. Like he's start like he's starting to he's kind of becoming like a film star, if I recall. Like or like a or a, he's he gets famous. That's the thing. Yeah, like so, they're they're casting a movie and everything. So yeah. yeah. So so as much as it could be filler, I like that because you can actually see what they were trying to show us and get us to know, and that's that both the the two siblings are are still different people and how they have their own aspirations, uh, things they things they want. And it's not always gonna involve them being together. Both of them can lead their own lives and still be siblings. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's fair. So that's your favorite episode? Yes. Least favorite, then? Uh, I don't... You know, there's, there's an episode where we, they have this friend who's, who's an alien, too, who's, like, in a... In a in like the washer, like in the wa in the in the in the wash in the public wash thing, and they're tr and he's telling them that there's someone who's after him or something. Oh, that's you're talking about Stuart, and it's um, yes, yeah, throughout. I believe that is that. season two. Yeah, there's something about Gwen of Gorbin, like his ex girlfriend is yeah, coming back, and he wants again, to keep that, her from eating him, and. The, the big reveal at the end of that episode is like, oh, Gwen's actually working for General Miranda as well and lets them know that the royals are on Earth, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, so again, it's, it, you know, if you take that bit out, and honestly, you could have, you know, General Miranda could have come to Earth at any anyway. You could have fit it into one, any other episode. It just... It I mean, just felt like filler. Jim Miranda just felt like... did come to Earth the next episode, and they had this big thing with the asteroid, and that was supposed to have hidden him. And that was yeah. way more meaningful because it involved but... Tronos. Yeah, but again, I the episode in general, though, it just felt like filler because we needed to get one more episode done before we finish. Fair. And it's like, yeah. That I one's definitely... Know. It's fine, but yeah, I just there's nothing there except for Stuart, and I like Stuart. He's okay, but very much not a character that, uh, you know, I care that much about. Like he's it, it's fun. a side, it's a side character to the highest degree. He's yeah. just there. It's interesting. Again, it's it comes back to the show has some strength in giving its side character stuff, but this side character stuff came at the cost of. Krell's stuff, I feel, right? exactly. and his development, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So, yes, my least favorite episode of season two would be probably Lug's Day Out because it's basically one big digestion joke with a bunch of fart jokes, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's all focused uh, on it, yeah. Lug eating the wormhole device and just teleporting all over town. Which, yeah, and again, it's again, it's one of those we needed to fit filler to the highest degree like it, it has some connection in this aja meeting general morando and having a bit of a fight with him and that's how they find out general morando is on earth but mm -hmm. again as you've said before if you cut that out this episode really serves no point and you mm -hmm. you have the bigger episode with them meeting general morando and him being on earth coming after that in the episode or two after that right so it's just mm -hmm. meh it's not that important or enjoyable. My favorite yeah. episode, I would say, would probably be Race the Troll Market because that's when we really get something for Krell in which he has to go into the pit and face his deepest fear, and his deepest fear is losing all of his, you know, the people he's come to love and respect and enjoy and fr have friendships with on Earth, right? And that's when Krell yeah, starts to... And it's, the first time we kind of really get anything on this whole, hey, Krell wants to stay on Earth because he he's come to love it as his new home. This is home for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> I wish they had done more with that before now, but I still really loved and enjoyed the connection there and the big connection of, you know, seeing just how connected the Troll Hunter's magic was with the Ocaridian tech to some degree in that episode where... It, you had the Troll Hunter's magic protecting Galen's core and how that was all connected, and you had Kanjigar kind of show up and 
show that respect to the royals and everything like it was it was enjoy it was very much enjoyable and very interesting i just wish there was a little bit more of that in that way yeah i agreed so <clears throat> final uh, final words uh you know, final words i might have issues as i said before i might have issues with three below but i still absolutely think it's worth a watch and i think it's mm -hmm. For the most part, very good. I think it could have been better, but I still think it's very good. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I agree. I, I am. Um, I really enjoyed Three Below. I think, despite it being a bit too uncertain of what um, about uh, you know about uh, what uh, how it tries to play play itself uh, as a part of a whole thing or not, but. I still think it's definitely I, worth a shot. And with that said, I, I, I will say, I will say this, right? Having rewatched most everything now, except for Wizards in season one ish, kind of two ish, but I watched most of it, rewatched most of it. In, in you know, in preparation for doing all of this and going into the movie, I'm I'm more interested in the movie. I'm more interested again, like the movies more back on my radar now because I've watched all this again and it's more back on my mind. I'm very interested in what the movie's going to do and if the movie can pull it off. And I really do hope it can. But I would be lying if I said that I think it can because I'm, I'm, it's got a lot to do, I feel. And it's going to be very interesting to see if they can manage that and if it works out for them. I hope it does. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yep, I agree. Now you can end. So, okay then. Uh, hold on, people message me. Uh, so, uh, expectations from the movie. You know, let's end with that. Expectations of the movie. I mean, I'm hoping that we get to see a mixture of Three Below. I really do hope we get to learn a bit more of the Acheridians. And, like, I've not watched any trailers, nothing. I have no knowledge of the movie going into this, so... I watched I watched one trailer and honestly I like someone linked me the opening of it which was published on YouTube and I'm like I don't want to see more the trailer is enough fair so yeah like I I'm I'm hoping we get to see some three below interactions some characters there coming back and interacting I'm hoping we get something on Galen's core or how the Acheridians and how the Acheridians and trolls were connected in the past potentially if that's important like something on that i'm hoping we get like you know i'm hoping we get the sci-fi element mixed in more with the magical element and seeing how all that connects and just having those interactions and then just getting to see you know more of duxie and more of the character at the end because i remember talking about the the little tree girl i don't remember her name or what to call her and yeah. how she looked absolutely mm -hmm. adorable wearing you know modern clothes i want to yeah. see more of that because that was adorable not going to lie <laughs> okay then so with that said that's all we have for this episode of the outcast we hope you enjoyed what are your thoughts on three below and are you excited for troll hunters rise of the titans you can tell us all about this in the comment section below on our Twitter, which is Bellcast with the capital B, capital C, and on our Tumblr, which is Bellcast Team. So, until next time, I was HC. I was Wolf. And we will see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.